<laughs> good evening good evening good evening warriors on a mission i got a feeling this is going to be a short one today I'm not sure but kind of got a feeling you know um my father sometimes you think to yourself why god why am i going through what i go through what is it that you're up to man have you forgotten me you, some of these things may cross your mind and I'm sure any Christian any child of God have had seasons in your life where it feels like man I feel like I feel like you're down here all by yourself fighting a battle that you're not gonna win but that's a lie that's a lie and you know what I've learned that if I'll run to my word and just look up what I'm dealing with God will speak to me through his word and today I'm just just looking at things that may be going to that is going on in my life and looking at things that I see my loved ones going through I mean I see multiple people body of Christ going through things that they've never faced before I mean battles they've never had to deal with before but I'm encouraged as I looked into the word and and first thing I did when I picked my phone up, my brother in Christ had sent out his call from Calvin Jr. That's so weird. But I looked at my text message that my brother in Christ has sent encouraging the believers. He does it daily. Thank you, brother. I I mean I, I passed the call. I, I bless you, man. Every day this man sends out a word. And if you read it, it'll speak to you. And I thank God that every day that I go through something, God has sent a word. He sends a word to, to encourage us. He speaks through so many things, but oftentimes it could be a scripture passing you or anything. Good evening, family. I thank God that he speaks. I thank God that he speaks to us to encourage us and to remind us that we're not in a losing battle. The enemy wants us to think, give up. Give up. But you ever thought about what is it that God's trying to bless you with? You ever thought about what is it the enemy's trying to take from you? You're almost there. What is he trying to take from you? You may be looking for relief in any way possible, but God has already, he's already blessed us. He's already done it. Word of God said he knows how much you can bear. So when you think about it, what is it that he's doing to you? What is he doing to us? What is he trying to shake off of us? Sometimes we build a life off doing it a certain way and God's trying to change it and we fight change so hard. And God said, as soon as you accept what I'm doing in your life, I can get you through it. Israelites got to go back to them because that's the per perfect example of how they fought everything God was doing. And God was just trying to lead them to the promised land. But they were so familiar with their area, they did not want to change. And so I thank God that as I'm going through changes and my brothers and sisters are going through changes, that if we are just hold on. Man, God has a perfect thing set up that. If we do what the enemy says, we do what the devil says, and we do what he, what our flesh wants, and we like, man, I just look for peace, I give up. We'll never get to the destination. We'll never get to the destination. God has a season for battle. How do I know? I look in the Old Testament, man. There was some hands-on material going on. But I also look at my life, and there are seasons in my life that I went through some hard battles that if I had had it easy, I would never have learned and got the tools that I needed for the period, for the period of rest that came. But I also wouldn't have never had the tools that I needed for the next battle. I wouldn't have had the faith that God was going to bring me through it to just somehow endure and stop fighting. Stop fighting what God was doing. And so I'm reminded, and before we go into, into, into the passage of, that God has given us on the day, I'm, I'm, we're going to go into prayer. But I'm reminded that God, once again, has given us countless testimonies that we can watch. As we read this word of God, it's like watching it live. 
watching, like especially like um, Job and so many others that as you read it, you see them go through a long process. You see the highs, the lows, and then you see the victory at the end. And so before we go any further, I want us to pray. So there we go. God, I thank you, Father, for speaking. Lord, let your word just rest in our hearts, Father. Encourage those that need to be encouraged, including myself in areas. Continue to do what you do, God. God, there is no walk without you. Wait a minute. There is no walk of victory without you. You've made it that way. You've made it that way. Because you said that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. So everything in life is going to line up to every knee and every knee bowing and every tongue confessing. God, I thank you that the quicker we get there, the quicker we're able to rest even as we go through obstacles. Rest even as we're fighting battles. We're going through battles. We're resting. Because you said the battle's not ours, but it's yours. So that only comes when we get to a place of faith that we rest as you fight. God, I thank you that you're even encouraging us at this moment. That this battle that looks so large, for one, was ordained by you. Number two, is already defeated because you, we rest in you and you have already overcome this world. So, Lord, we thank you for the victory. Continue to teach as you teach us how to rest. Thank you, Father. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so look, the passage of scripture God gave me today was out of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verse 11. And it says different versions, it's different wording for those, depending on what kind of version of, of the word that you have. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. You know, as I looked at this passage of scripture, and, and, and in, in, many, in many of the versions it says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Plans for you to prosper. Plans for you to prosper. And, 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 and so, that alone, that passage of plans for me to prosper, that God is doing everything that he's doing. This thing that it looks like is breaking you into tire pieces. What is God doing? God breaks off this stuff that he, we don't need. The things that we can't take to the next level, God breaks us into pieces as he molds us and shapes us to the victory. The, vic, the victory. He shapes us and makes us grow into that, that setting of victory. That person that needs to have this breaking so that God can make you into the warrior he wants you to go through, to be. I'm reminded of when I checked into boot camp. And many of you all know the story of me, I was in the Marine Corps. I'm reminded of going into boot camp, thinking that I was already tough enough. But the Marine Corps broke me, broke every single piece of me. Oh man, I wanted to give up. All of us, I'm sure, wanted to give up. But it, towards the end, you started to see the light. You knew that there was, if you continued the process, it was a three-month journey. And you knew that if you continued, you was going to make it through it and, and graduate. Well, somewhere towards the end, you started realizing that you became tougher through your circumstances. And, and that as we got closer to graduation date, Things begin to ease up and you start to see yourself becoming that ideal Marine. And you look back over and, and, and every day there was some sort of crazy stretching obstacle that you ended up overcoming. Not that you wanted to, but it was either that or quit. But you had to overcome this obstacle in order to make it to the next level. And while going through all of this stuff that you never dreamed of ever being able to accomplish, here it was three months later, you stood getting that reward of being a, called a United States Marine. Well, here I am, fast forward past all of that, going through the breaking that God has ordained for me to break.
to go through. Shedding off those dead clothes, shedding off those clothes that no longer serves a purpose in my life. Oh, for a season it was okay to be Tyrese. If for a season it was okay to do lukewarm stuff. We talked about that last Sunday where I gave you a personal testimony. For a season, God kind of gave me grace over it. But when he started trying to shed me and make me to be, to be the man he wanted me to be, that Tyrese of 10 years ago couldn't go into the 11th year. That person that was okay with doing certain things, and, and this is what I'm known as, that guy had to die. And I didn't like it. Truth be told, sometimes I still don't like it because God ain't never stopped pressing and shaping and molding. That's going to go on until we look exactly like he wants us to be and then he calls us home. That's a dying daily. Check it. Die daily. That is a daily thing of God breaking off that old stuff. And like the Israelites, the longer we take to let God break, the longer the process. Man, when we ask the Holy Spirit to come in and run our life, that's what we get. The Holy Spirit actually comes in and he, you've asked him because you want to get saved, but God can't take that nature, that man, that woman, that child of that day that you asked God. God can't take that into glory. Even though you accepted Jesus Christ, if he has, I ain't going to say can't take that into glory. I can't because there's some that ask for salvation and Jesus came in at the very day they passed. But in many cases, if God call, called you and created you with a purpose, there's a lot of molding and shaping and all of these things as God begins to mold the clay. He has to cut, renew, refold, reshape, start all over again, reform, reshape, throw through some fire, mend it, shape it, cut it, slice it, dice it. Come on, man. Some things he'll do without our permission, but a lot of things he'll wait on us. We waiting on God and God's waiting on us. God said do it this way. We do it our way expecting to get the same return that God told us not to do. God says if you do it this way, I'm going to bless you. If you hang through the process, Israelites are take you to the promised land. We don't want to go through the process, but we want to get to the promised land. So now we're mad at God because we can't do it our way and get to the destination that he has ordained for us to have. Man, who told us? Who spoiled us? Who spoiled us? Who spoiled us and gave things our way and got us to the process? Now you ain't clean your room, but here's the, here's the money anyway. No, you didn't come home on time, like I told you, but here's the car keys anyway. No, you cussed out everybody in your family, but it's okay, here's your allowance. Who did that? Who told us that's how life going to be? No, I'm going to cuss this boss out, but I expect to come back to work tomorrow. Like I ain't done no wrong. Who said that? Who trained us to be that way? God has grace. But that process he's taking us through, you can't get to the next level until that process, that old man has been shed. You know how many times I've had people tell me, Tyrese, that got to die before you can get to the next level. Really? Man, I thought I, thought I was doing pretty good. No. Stop because of me. Stop because of me. I was stuck because of me. We talked about this last Sunday. But it, that ain't the first time. I was stuck because of me. Not because so-and-so didn't call in, so-and-so didn't complete this, so-and-so didn't. No, 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 no. Stuck if you're still blaming everybody else. And so I thank God that he says, I know the end for I got for you. Plans for you to prosper. Plans for you to prosper. And I believe it said be of good health or something like that. But I'm look, I like the other version, the, the NIV version. This right here is not the NIV version. This, I read to you what the MacArthur, uh, uh, MacArthur Study Bible says. But in order for me to read the version I really like, I have to log off this and pick it up on my phone. I knew I should have brought my tablet, but I didn't. 
But I like that one says, plan for you to prosper. Why I'm freaking out like, God, man, this ain't for me. God said, no, stay right there. No, God, this ain't for me. No, stay right there. God, I hate this. Stay right there, boy. Okay. Thank you, Lord. His plan is for me to prosper. But I got to die daily so that he can get the glory. I got to let him shed this old nature off so that he can get me out the fire. I can't come out the fire too early. Because then once I cool off, God will look at all the stuff that I that's still on. And then he have to send me right back into the fire because that has to get off. It can't go. God don't want me to stuck, stay as a babe. God give us life from infant, toddler, adolescent, teenager, preteens, teenager, young adult, adult. He shows us these things on purpose. To show us that even in the spirit realm, we got to grow up. He can't leave us the same because he created us for the end result. You ain't going to look like this tomorrow. You're not going to look like this 10 years from now. God created us for the end result. Your end result is going to bless many. And that's how the body of Christ keep going forward. If Martin Luther King had a state of babe, you touch me, I'm going to bust your head open. You don't think Martin Luther King went through that? You don't think he went through that in his preteens? You don't think with all the brothers and sisters and the cousins he had that he never get into a fight? Didn't you? But God had a process. If he'd have came out still busting heads, would his message been the same? Would he had had an impact? So God created us for, I remember, the, God created us for the end result. I remember him saying in one of his, I think the last speech Martin Luther King said, that don't matter now, because I've been to the mountaintop. Y'all ain't Martin Luther King. I just remember that portion where he come through the entire process and now he's at his end and he's saying it doesn't matter now. God had remade him, reshaped him, and he preached God, he preached to thousands to encourage them that after he left, we can continue to push forward in the message God gave him to deliver to us. Many of us today is still living out that message. Today, y'all, we're still living out that message. Turn the other cheek. It ain't time to react that way. Don't react in violence or we'll blow the whole entire thing. That man was born, I believe, in 1920-something. He's been gone since, the, I believe, 60-something. 63, 64, 67, 60. I'm sorry, y'all. The history part, I don't remember. It's right now. 60-something. But yet many of us are still being reminded of that, of that walk. And it encourages us because we see a Christian follow it and we see the results. So now we can take the Bible... And with God saying, shut up, it ain't time. Oh, now I'll give you what to speak. Like he did with uh, 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 Moses going to Pharaoh. He knew the whole entire thing. Pharaoh was going to reject it every single time. But God set Moses to continue to keep going. So this thing will build up so much and people will get so many eyes on it. And that eventually Pharaoh will find out who the true and living God is. If Pharaoh had about the first time, would it have built up so much steam to have such an impact on us today? No, it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have reached those in the countries around them to understand that our God is powerful, not your idols. That's our father. So continue. Continue in whatever battle that you're in. God is shedding off the old man. Oh, it don't feel good. But that's the process. That's the process. 
If you're following God, if God has told you this is for you, and it hurts, it ain't nothing like what you want. God got a purpose. If you knew how to get there, you'd be there. You already got there. But we would have came with that same pamper, that, and with that same bottle of formula, semi like in the bottle, in the bottle, we would have got there to the destination and blew it because we got there our way. We still look like a, pa a baby. Amen. And so I say today, get your eyes off the process and get your eyes on Jesus. Let him encourage you. Let him speak to you. Wallow in him. I'm telling you, I go old school. Wallow in him until he encourages you to continue through the purpose. Continue through the process. Continue and let him mold and shape you. Because he knows the final destination. And your destination is going to affect many. But it got to get you there. Amen. Pray for this word encourage you. It's encouraging me. I, I, I want more. This is why I have to get in this word daily. It's a daily fight. It's a daily. It's a daily, 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 daily fight. So I got to stay in this thing. If I don't, my soul will overpower my spirit. I need my spirit to overpower my soul. I need all that emotions and being ran by my emotions to be shut down and put under my feet. To be not in control. I need me to walk in God's spirit. To walk in the spirit. Which connects me and makes me one. So that when I get into hard times, I go straight, I go straight word. What did you say about this, Lord? What are you doing? I don't jump in the solar shrine and just spaz out no more. I don't say that as disrespect. I say that as encouragement. I, do I still have moments? Yes, but I know where to go now. I know where to go now. I know where to go. I got to go to him. I ain't going to make it on my own. I can't do this by myself. I will abandon ship every time if I do it by myself. Because that's the soulless realm. Living through my emotions. But God. So I say to you today. Be encouraged. Know that our maker has done this on purpose. God has done this on purpose y'all. I t you've heard me say multiple times, it wasn't until I got into third person and I began to see this thing from God's eyesight and see how God works this thing and notice from the word of God that God has done this to multiple people and then I see the victory at the end. Third person. Because as long as I stayed in first person, man, I was just sitting in the middle of the soldier's room, pity party like galore. And not just a pity party, just I didn't understand and I wanted to abandon the ship. But when I got and I began to look through the eyes of God and began to say, God, what are you doing? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What you say, God? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. What you trying to say? I ain't got to understand the process to follow you. That's exactly what he's telling me. God, that's too simple and it's too hard. It's too simple to understand and follow, but it's too hard to do. No, it ain't. Not with him. With God, all things are possible. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me I got to stop doing it my way and renew my mind and let you lead? Exactly. Y'all, these are the conversations I've had with God. And at times, I still got to go back. But I thank you that he shows me and gives me an answer. Now, it was up to me to follow him. But the process don't stop. It only gets better if I let him take me through the process. Because as long as I combat it, I got to stay in the fire. I got to stay in the fire. If I want to get out the fire fast, I got to let him lead. That's the best formula right there. And so I thank you all on the day for tuning in. Prayerfully, you got what you need from God. Go to God for yourself. 
if this speaks your interest, what they say, uh, 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 kind of piques your interest, go to God for yourself. Ask him about your situation and watch him lead you. Amen. Let's close with prayer. Father, I thank you for your word on the day. I thank you, Father, for speaking. I thank you, Father, for encouraging all of us to continue in the fight. But you said the fight's already rigged. The battle is yours. So I just got to stay there and not abandon the ship, but let you lead. So God, continue to comfort us. Continue to walk through. Walk us through every situation. You've already ordained the victory. We just got to endure the fire so that we can get to the promised land. Thank you, Father. For what is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love y'all. This is a word from God, y'all. Listen, follow, and let him lead us. Let him lead us through the fire. He ain't trying to destroy us, but he said in Jeremiah, the 29, 11 chapter, it's for us to prosper. Amen. Have an awesome day. Stay connected to him. Don't let go. No matter how hot, how hard it gets and how hot it gets, don't let go. I love y'all. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.